So I watched Roger growing up and he was a superstar. Everybody knew who Roger Cornish was. He had taken the station from, as he said, number four in a three station market to number one. He has seen the station go through the worst of times and the best of times. He wasn't just an anchor, he was a reporter. It's really good for a station to have someone like that and obviously Roger has been that for, for many, many years. He's a calming sensation when the rest of the newsroom seems to be on fire with breaking news, everybody's scrambling. He's always solid, he's always been that person you can trust. You hear Roger and it kind of settles you down and you just know you're going to get the straight facts and that's been that way for four decades. You can't be in one place for 41 years and not be trusted. It's really strange to think of Channel 12 without Roger Cornish. To borrow a phrase from Charles Dickens, 1953 was the worst of times and the best of times. KWCH in the, in the early 60s and in the middle 60s was a joke. Uh, it didn't have much of a news presence. Uh, they didn't really know what they were doing. Over the course of time, things change. This is Channel 12, KTVH. Good evening, this is News 12 at 6, I'm Roger Cornish. Two Wichita... So Roger, what year did you start? Uh, the first time, it was 1972 on the camera crew in Hutchinson, but that was a minimum wage job at the time, $1.60 an hour, 35 hours a week, so the take-home pay each two weeks was about 100 bucks. So this is over in Hutch, yes. and on the camera crew you did what? Just ran the camera, and we, we have robotic cameras now, just actually physically ran the camera and, and the audio board and so forth. Your dad worked for the yes. station? Yes. The day the station went on the air in 1953, my dad was on the staff and worked there until 56. So you're part-time then. Do you keep that job? Do you go do for something else? about a year else? and a half. And then I went into some other stuff and realized that uh, working construction and fixing the typewriters was not going to be my, my future. Came t into the news department at Channel 12 in December of 76 with no training. I had no idea what I was doing. Merrill is either trying out auditioning for a Gene <laughs> Kelly movie or trying to give us an ominous warning I'm about the weather. I'm glad I listened to myself mm -hmm. yesterday. Roger and I almost worked together in Oklahoma City back in 1980. I was working for a television station, brand new, on the air in, in Oklahoma City, and Roger came for an interview for a news job there. Well, it turns out he didn't take it. And a year and a half later, Kansas, here I came. Uh, I'm going to discard this, excuse me. Channel 12 was not a successful place back then. People who call Rose Hill a dynamic little town have even more reason to do so these days. Besides not a happy place to work. In ratings, it wasn't successful and, until we got uh, lo local ownership out of Hayes, Ross Beach and Bob Schmidt. When they bought it, my dad said, hey, if Bob's involved, you're going to be okay. And they brought in Ron Bergamo. I almost said Ron Burgundy. Ron Bergamo to run the place. He hired Steve Ramsey as a great news director. KWCH obtained some really, really good management people. They worked quietly and silently behind the scenes building up this station. And the story was, what I was told is that no one's safe because they wanted to broom everybody. But then Ron said, it just doesn't feel right to me. And he kept me. Roger, I your hair's right. He hired a little brown haired girl named Susan to anchor with me. And we, Eyewitness News started in August of 1983. In order to do this, we must make a clean break from the past. They actually blew up the styrofoam logo of the 12 to start over and named it KWCH. All of a sudden, one day, here's Roger Cornish, here's Susan Peters, and boom, they're number one. Susan Peters joins Roger Cornish nightly at 6 and 10, and Wichita's best meteorologist, Merrill Teller. The first day was the day we launched the look of a leader, Eyewitness News, and it was the day we were number four in a three-station market. That was our first day, and uh, ever since then, it was totally smooth sailing. Uh, apparently, Wichita liked us, too, because we received several calls in the newsroom saying, we love your new look, we love your new people, we, we love you guys. You really are going to be the look of a leader. They deserve to be number one. They were doing a great job. Uh, Roger and Sue went to all the local events. Thanks, uh, Roger. Uh, they became part of the community, which to me was an absolute key point in their management uh, way of doing things. 
is to become involved in the community. People see you care about the community. They're going to watch at night. And Roger and Sue made that happen. You guys are clear. It was beautiful. That was nice. What do you think was the key to success in turning Channel 12 into what it is today? Just me, personally. <laughs> it starts at the top. Ownership, leadership. They invested money. They brought in great people. And that, I think, is an underrated uh, gift for, a, for leaders hiring good people. We thought well, it's a flash in the pan. It'll only last a couple of years. When it's important to reach your top. We were so wrong, and they were so right. Our DMA household share is up 45%, making us the number one newscast, while the other two stations' newscasts have stayed flat or decreased. KWCH TV, when everything depends on it. This is Eyewitness News at 6 in Stereo with Roger Cornish and Susan Peters. And he'll tell you, I always looked in the mirror before I went on TV. He looked in the mirror a lot and he would do this with his hair. And one day, I guess Susan is looking at the teleprompter and it says, hi, I'm Roger Cornish. And Susan says, and this was on, live on the air. I'm Roger Cornish. I'm Susan Peters. I'm Roger Cornish. <laughs> Next on Eyewitness News, can you There were literally times we were on the set. We'd come out from a commercial, and I could not quit laughing. Roger, I forgot your name. <laughs> Everyone does it. It's Roger Cornish. I've only worked here 10 years. Could Don't you worry repeat about that, please? Roger Cornish. Gray Maroon News. <laughs> <laughs> what camera are we looking at? I was on the floor crew at the time, and you know we'd go to a commercial break, and after whatever story or whatever they were talking about, he'd you know sometimes make jokes about different things, and half the time she couldn't stop laughing because he's still cracking jokes. I'm sorry, Thane. I got this started, and there's no there's no solution now. You have any oxygen for her? And he would go, well, here's Susan with her furball laugh again. Good night, folks. It'll be Furball City here in a second. <laughs> they were just being normal people, and that's what I think people enjoyed so much about Roger. them. Roger! That time, that special time uh, in the 80s in which Roger and Sue became a team, that was a game changer. She was there until 91 when she went to San Diego. And that's when we hired Cindy, of course. Now, the area's number one rated 5 o'clock news. Good afternoon, I'm Cindy Close. Thanks for joining us. I'm sure he was really apprehensive because he'd had another partner for many years and they'd become number one. And here comes this stranger in and I got to meet him when I came for an audition and we hit it off right away. Okay, we still have the, uh, the tornado. I came here a few weeks after the Andover tornado. So I think our first live coverage on air during a big event would have been the Hayesville tornado. Via Christie St. Francis talking about 30 to 40 patients. There were tornadoes in Oklahoma that night and he was worried about his parents who lived down there. And the next thing we know, we were getting reports of the Hayesville tornado. And we were on the Another air day, for hours that night. For tornado victims in parts of Wichita, Hayesville, and in other areas of Kansas. And I think that's when you really learn about another person is how they are under extreme circumstances like that and having to be live on the air. And every Jeff time Ewell, Roger Life in was in the coolest head in the room. Good evening. President Bush tonight is the first to put a number on the casualties of what he calls an evil act of terror. He says we cover a lot of different stories, of course, in our jobs. Eyewitness News reporter Kim Wilhelm joins us from McConnell Air Force Base with the latest. And day. after maybe a particularly long day or a tough day, Roger will always send out an email to the entire staff thanking everybody for their work or comforting them. I've always been impressed with that. I think that's really neat. It means a ton to the reporters, to our photographers, to our digital team, um, and really shows that, you know, he's a leader here. That's right, Roger, FAA grounded almost 22 flights right here in Wichita. It's scary when you come in. Number one, this whole industry is kind of intimidating, and it's high pressure. Uh, there are deadlines, and Roger has a way of kind of keeping it in perspective for everyone. Roger has the ability to just kind of zone in and just take in what is being said currently, um, whether it's a live interview in the field, whether it's the meteorologist talking about severe weather approaching, and then can just bring it back to the viewers and keep us all, you know, centered on this just simple focus of making it about the breaking news at that moment. The eyes of the nation have again been focused on Oklahoma City. 
Cindy Close joins us now from the bombing site. We had many other events, the Oklahoma City bombing, the Carr Brothers case, BTK coverage, and tornadoes. Tuning in right now, expecting another show. Let's bring those people up to date on what we have had happen overnight in Greensburg, Kansas. Roger was always the steadying force in the newsroom for all those big events. So Cindy and I worked together for 25 years till she retired. Cindy, thank you for 25 years. It's been great. It's been an honor. And we salute you to Cindy. I was so glad I had somebody like him to work with. People's favorite segment uh, has always been Answer Back. Uh, my mom, that's her favorite se segment, and I I'm on I'm on the channel. So Answer Back won't be the same, you know, because Roger has a creative way of responding to viewers, even in the nicest way, even though when maybe they're not as nice to us. You kind of hold your breath a little bit, not knowing what he's going to say, but it is it's fantastic. He gets a nice mix of being able to answer viewers' questions and then have his own style with it. You have questions, we have answers. At least we try to. When we announced your retirement, the one common theme was, I'm gonna miss Answer Back. <laughs> answer Back. His wit, his sense of humor. Well, How did was, Answer Back start? It was just a throwaway thing by the news director, Gail, at that time in 1996. He said, hey, I had an idea for you to go on Sunday nights well, and just answer calls on the air. Viewers, and I said, so you really want me doing that? That's kind of dangerous, isn't it? And she said, yeah, but you'll, you can show your personality. I said, well, you don't maybe want me to show my whole personality. Hello and Merry Christmas. Aloha. Como esta? Hey, was that mine rescue and chili something or what? Muy bueno, see? They kind of give you free reign. Yeah, no one's really ever said anything to me about it. I've heard more about that than anything else I've ever done on the air. And it was just kind of a throwaway idea. We've been looking all weekend for that Millie, and Millie wasn't on. It makes my wife aggravated when she don't get to see Millie. Millie's work schedule is controlled by the International Brotherhood of Canine Meteorologists. Millie was actually born a St. Bernard in Switzerland in the years between the World Wars. With Ross's dog, Millie, is actually a stuffed toy, much like this one. We've done, well, probably a thousand by now. And I remember every one. Would you please tell Merrill to burn that striped suit he wears? He looks like a tick about to pop. What is wrong with that Bruce Hurdle, man? He's wearing some mustard plaid ugly suit with a yuck ugly tie. It looks like vertical hole gone wild. Can't you guys do something about the way you people dress? Let me answer that this way. If I've had some calls and complaints that, you know, I'd ask you this, but you just give some sarcastic, smart ass answer. I think, I would. I don't do that, do I? I keep hearing that. Do I do that? Mike? <laughs> oh, my Mike? <laughs> oh, we're going to have tornado warnings today. We didn't have a drop of rain. I want your job. Can't have it. Probably the most common ones are weather cut-ins. I'm watching the show and you guys broke in with weather. Or why isn't the game on when I want to watch it? Those kind of programming things. But then there are also some real characters. You know, there's the guy we call Angry Man, Richard, and... Uh, the one we call Bitter Woman, Rhonda. Good to hear from you. And uh, you know, we just laugh at those because they're hilarious. But the camera seems so close to you guys, and it just seems very disorienting and, and almost distracting like a Teletubbies cartoon. Bruce Hurdle puts the BS in CBS. I don't know who's done it, but they've ruined Merrill Teller's hairstyle. You mean this hairstyle? Or perhaps you mean something a little more recent? Your evening news stinks. What a bad program. Thanks for the constructive criticism. I will personally try not to stink so badly. But it's been, I, I just hear, hear so much about that. He loves yeah. it when I do that. At the fair, I hear about that. You know, we joke about the state fair. We all go up there, and it just reminds me of what Kim said. He said, because she, she would joke and make the same jokes, but at the yeah. same time told me one time it was her favorite time of year, it's that she got to go up there and actually meet the viewers yes. and talk to them. Being there, standing there talking to people is always interesting because you get to see them face to face and you know, rather than just on the phone or us talking to them on screen. Hi, can I get a photo today? Sure. Uh, I was hoping for one of Millie. 
One of our favorite times was the State Fair. We would go there for a week and uh, sit there, meet people, do newscasts from there. This the uh, California Raisin, big for the second year in a row. And we gave out this most valuable possession, a fan. And this fan has a picture of Roger and I. And guess what, Roger? Were we the hottest news team in Kansas? What? Look at this. There's pictures in the phone, phone book. <laughs> Who are these people here? Right there, those folks. What are they doing there? <laughs> well, it's, it's Susan Peters and Roger Cornish. What? The hottest news team in Kansas. Susan Peters, Roger Cornish. It's Wednesday. We all know what Wednesday is, right? Hump day. Therefore, camels. I have some fond memories of Roger and some of the work we've done together. Uh, Kansas State Fair comes to mind. He uh, seemed to be a staple at the State Fair almost every year. Those of you wondering if I'm going to ride it, I'm not as stupid as I look. By midnight, you could be a sweater. We're going one way off the ladder, and that's down. But I, uh, I, had, a, like I had a question. People will come up, oh, hi, hi, Roger. Nice to meet you. I watched you for years. Oh, well, thank you. You're great. Thank you. You do the weather, right? I've been called Bruce. I've been called Merrill. I haven't been called Cindy. Roger was always unpredictable, and in the early years when I was here, he always did our state fair coverage, and you never knew what he was going to do. And one night we came back to him in a live shot, wrapping up his coverage, and he's in a hot tub, uh, apparently naked from the waist up, because you're just sitting there. Here's Roger, hairy chest, and I'm wondering, where is that mic? <laughs> My most fond memory must be the uh, goat milking contest that uh, he was often involved in, and I was the photographer for that event many of those years. The goats seem to have smaller milk things. I I've never seen a, a man his age, as he progressed, uh, have so much fun uh, in the goat milking contest and working with the milk things that we had to work with to try to compete with the Kansas Highway Patrol who normally won it every year. Stick to the milk garage. That's not enough for a school lunch. In search of better camel knowledge, Roger Cornish, KWCH 12 Eyewitness News. Roger, congratulations on your retirement. More than 40 years in this crazy business they call TV news. Roger, congratulations and enjoy your retirement. Congratulations on your retirement, Roger. Well, Roger, it's been a long, almost 37 years for me. I don't know how you made it to 42, but good luck in the next 42. Congratulations, Roger, on your more than 40 years of bringing Kansas the news. Good luck in your retirement, Roger. Enjoy. We spent a lot of years together, and they were mostly good. This is going to be the best part of your life. You're going to miss all the people you worked with, but I'm telling you what's waiting for you is freedom. I've got to say, the most fun ride I've ever taken in my 30 years in this business is the ride I took with you. Hi Roger, congratulations on your retirement. You've represented Channel 12 and KWCH very well throughout these 40 plus years. You're leaving behind an awesome legacy here at KWCH 12. You've been here, what, 40 plus years? Very rare in this industry, but I understand it's not because you didn't try, it's just nobody else wanted you. And that's, that's okay. Liz Collin here sending you a huge congratulations from Minneapolis. Now, I worked with you more than a dozen years ago now, but who can forget Roger Cornish? You had an impact on viewers, co-workers, and this reporter that we can never fully express. Congratulations on your retirement. We're going to miss you. Hopefully, we can cross paths on the golf course more often now. For more than 40 years, you've been bringing news and entertainment to Kansans, and you have been admired, watched, and loved. You've accomplished something that's very rare in our industry, and we appreciate that you did it in Kansas. Oh, and uh, thanks for elevating the Cornish name as well. It's really hard to imagine KWCH without the faces of Cindy and Roger at the anchor desk. But enjoy your much-deserved retirement. And we appreciate everything and all the time and work you've put in here at Channel 12. And it's been a pleasure working with you all these years. Thank you. Again, congratulations. Hope you enjoy it. You sure will be missed. Do you ever want to leave? Do you ever want to get out of the business? Uh, not more than once an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, the thing is, I have no education or discernible skill set. I mean, what else would I do? The, the priesthood is out. What does retirement look 
look like for you guys then? What, what do you want to do? Because I know that's going to be the question people ask me from now until the end of time is, what's Roger doing in retirement? Well, he, you can find him on the golf course. No, I, I think we'd like to do some traveling um, and just, you know, lay low. We just want to hang out at our house and have our family over and just share the good times. What Roger will find that the most important thing that he will remember over the 41 years are the friends he made along the way. The day after I met the person that I ended up marrying, I came back and I told him, I said, I met the person I'm going to marry last night. A few months later, uh, he stood up as the best man at our wedding, which was really nice, though Roger always says that he's the best man at any wedding. so. Roger likes to downplay his role in the newsroom. He makes jokes about being the one that fills the printer, which he actually does fill the printer and gets the scripts printed. Um, and I don't want to say he was the father of the newsroom, but he was always just this steadying influence. He definitely reminds us all that, you know, even when we don't have the most polished newscasts, we get to come back the next day and do it all over again. Dee Dee looks a little tired out there, doesn't she? We do live TV. We do like 50 hours a week, and things go wrong all the time. Good evening, everyone. No, the problem is not with your set. We're having some trouble with our lights. And he's always really good in reminding you that, guess what? We get to do it all over again tomorrow. Forget about today's show. Forget about that mistake you made or that technical problem that we had. People will forget about it tomorrow and we got a job to do. What do you miss the most? What will you miss the most? Two words, direct deposit. <laughs> now, I, the, the best thing about being in this business is working with creative, smart, funny people. And I'll miss that. The only deadline Roger's going to have from now on is making his tea time. It's really strange to think of Channel 12 without Roger Cornish. When people look at Channel 12, they automatically identify Channel 12 and Roger. It's going to be really hard to imagine him not in the newsroom. He, his son Chad, they introduced me to my husband as part of a blind date. Those friends stick with you. Those are what you treasure, not the awards. It's the friends you make along the way, and Roger's made a million of them. It's interesting, when Roger told me that he was going to be leaving, uh, I had the thought that why back in the day had we not started something that used to happen, gentlemen would get together and have a bottle of wine for the last man standing. And if we had only done that, I would have been the winner. Eventually, everything you see on the air will change. That's just the nature of the business, and it's the nature of life. You know, when people retire like Cindy and now Roger, um, eventually some of us others are, who are long in the tooth, uh, it, you don't replace those people, you just hope to you know, fill the void that's left behind. And for the people coming up, they make their own mark. I, I think the future is bright for KWCH. You've got Mike and Melissa, and you've got uh, other staff members that are coming up, and, and they're dedicated to what they do. When I turn on the TV and the news is on, I'll miss not seeing him, but I'll like seeing you. <laughs> Mike and I are so lucky to work with Roger and Cindy. You know, I had the privilege of working with them for seven years and, you know, watching them when I was younger. And Mike had the privilege of working with them for much longer than I did. When people think Channel 12, and we've been that dominant station for so many years, and I think a lot of that credit goes to Roger. He's just Channel 12. Roger Cornish, Eyewitness News.